Grown Black Folks Talk, story time, the bookstore pre-dumpster dive. This is a memory I would prefer not to have ever had bought up, but I just talked to you about being vetted on site and what happens when people don't protect what they have. And what happens to you if you don't get out when you see that? See, the thing about it is, the thing about racism, people will come around and tell you that Black people are reverse racist. Nope. The only thing I can do in a racist neighborhood is move. I don't have the connections with city officials necessary to gentrify it overnight. That's what happened when I was still a child and the crack house down the street finally discombobulated. Overnight, I mean, it just, it was not that quick. But I remember my grandmother was getting up in age and no longer recognized the neighborhood she lived with, that she lived in and, you know, developed dementia and was worried about the Klan because she'd never lived around that many white people on good standing in her life. People moved in, changed the, changed the paint and she never recognized where she lived again. I can be prejudiced, but I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't have that kind of connection with power and I never will in the United States of America. But I recognize the principle in light of the assault that happened today and in light of people reading black women's data and knowing that a lot of times men who are shiftless get to live up and live up with us. We allow them to do this. And in San Francisco, there's a great history of people, women, grandmothers, mamas, sisters, and girlfriends being put out of their houses for harboring these men. And the white neighborhood associations here make sure that happens because they ain't going back. So I told you that story. That brought up another memory. And this is why people protect their things so hard and what happens if you don't. I'm an author four times over. My books are The Freedom Guide for Music Creators, 2008, first edition, 2013, I think was the third, and it's overdue to be updated again. Um, I can't remember the name of number, um, Again, there's some time on these now in 2022. Number four, Black, White, and Red All Over is a mystery that really goes around. I accidentally predicted January 6th in this book. I'll, I'll link to that one. For those of you who are looking for a good read, it's available. Actually, you know what? Not on this video. This is available on my new website where you can get the audio book. But I'll, I'll put out some information about this eventually for those of you that are interested in me. No compulsion, you do not have to. Actually, what I'll do today is I'll link to the readings that I've done on this, if anybody's interested in what that book is about. And the middle two are escaping me right now. Season, season Siblings Timeshare Tip is number two, now that I remember it. Uh, a funny story about San Francisco's wild weather and how the seasons here do not go in the months you think they do and will get down in the autumn and start arguing about what is it summer or winter or spring and go on until winter doesn't even get to come in here till December 15th and this year winter was like you know what y'all don't want me cool I'm out y'all gonna deal with this in the summer but I, okay cool <laughs> so I just wrote it up as a story but when I started this particular bookstore gave me my start one of the proprietors told me okay go up on such and such um, lightning source and you can get your book professionally printed there since our printer can't print it, it's too small. They had their own printer. And you know, her brother talked to me about, yeah, that would kill us because your book is kind of small. It would be hard for us and you to be profitable. So he gave me some valuable information. She gave me some valuable information. So I was able to go out of the spiral bind into a professionally printed book. And they hosted that book, first edition, second edition. Uh, I'm trying to think about well, at least the first and the second. And I was so grateful that I left them all the profits for the first edition because we all knew they were in trouble. We knew they were in trouble because what we were told was that this white family, and see, this is how I had to mention this thing about reverse racism. You can't actually be racist, but we can be prejudiced. We can run game based on old resentments about racism. What we were told in the community is that this, there was a foreclosure issue and it was, it was predatory and this white family had bought up the foreclosure and they were trying to put the bookstore out. They were charging an exorbitant amount of rent now that they own the property and they were trying to get an eviction put through. 
So we're just sitting here letting just bread, bread, you know, we just letting royalties be kept. I'm out here trying to figure out, okay, the city's gonna buy the book to put it in the public library. And I'm sitting here going, okay, you have your city vendor license. Why don't you buy it and sell it to them? I'd love for you to have it. Guess who didn't have their city vendor license? So I ended up running, it took one day. I hand walked everything I needed, became a city vendor and took care of business myself. I own a business, why the heck not? I wanted them to have that though. San Francisco Public Library has 24 branches. That would have been good money for them. I left all my royalties on the first edition on the table and then tried to work through them for everything else and nothing was working. Many people came around, many other organizations came around to try to save this institution. And everybody came in and bombed. And what I learned in my early 30s watching this terrible process taking place is that sometimes God, God knows and what you don't is that people don't want to be saved. They want to continue to run their game. Come to find out. Somebody in the family told me the truth. They hadn't even bothered to show up in court. So the other family who happened not to be white but actually Jordanian happened to be granted a summary judgment. Come to find out one of the proprietors was sitting up talking about the musical that they wanted to write and talk about if they could just smoke enough weed to get back to that state of mind. Come to find out, I met the drug dealer with one of them. Come to find out, they bought a house on the community before Patrice Conn Coolers did it for almost the same amount that somebody had taken a mortgage out on that property that they had no ability to pay because physical bookstores ain't selling like that, particularly if you don't have a sense enough to put up a website. I sold books there with myself. I would come through there and sell my book off those shelves to share revenue with them. But I noticed now the community had gentrified, they just didn't care the least bit about their white customers. Like I said, a black person cannot be racist because we don't have that kind of power. We can let our prejudice put us in a grave. Payoff was one day I arrived, folks talking about maybe Oprah will come and bail us out once we tell them our story. Someone had ordered the book overnight and the person who was trying to do the weed to get back to writing the musical could not figure out how to use the new computer system to fill the order. So guess who had to go in there and learn by doing on site? I did to sell my own book. It's already three days late. If I hadn't walked in there, Spirit of God said to me, okay, the bookstore can no longer sell books. You're done. You are done. You're not going to put any more books in here. Now, before this happened, now remember, I'm a Christian. Some of you wouldn't have a problem with a big golden Buddha being moved out of the back to the front because the one with the drug dealer was a Buddhist and was openly worshiping and then finally got so bold as to put it out in the front. And, and putting the, the black woman as God cards right beside it. I'm like, uh, yeah, we got a problem. Now I can't pray for y'all. That might not be a problem for those of you who are not Christians. I'm just saying it's just another set of red flags. The inconsistencies were adding up, but that was the last straw. And the reason it took all that for me to get that, you know, every time we try to do a fundraiser, you know, that storm we had, if you live in the San Francisco Bay Area, that storm we had on October 21st, October 24th, last year, that was basically like the end of the world, as we know it, that one, October 24th of that year that we tried to do that fundraiser, that was another end of the world, as we know it, storm. It was the end of that fundraiser. It wasn't as, as violent as the October 24th storm from last year here, but it was, <laughs> the violence was amazing in terms of what it did to this big fundraiser and birthday party they were trying to have. It was really hard to let go because I love those people. They had given me a church a chance to leg up. Yeah, and long before the end, I was already doing way more work than I should have had to do and selling more books out of the store by working on it than any other author there. Just, you know, by virtue of coming down there every day, being there, talking with the people. This was the place where people came and talked and had coffee and all kinds of other things. And when I had to share the news that the store was no more, younger people I was working with at that time cried. Because it was a place that they could connect to all generations of people that were interested in learning. The, the conversations, the, 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 the data just at available at the fingertips. Do you know what happened to all those books? I don't know if actually if it happened to all the books because that would have been the property of the business. And honestly, I don't know that. 
But I do know that I came just to see how things were doing one day and actually almost broke my neck double taking. I looked through the door and it was a shotgun shack. Everything had been taken off the walls. The shelves were gone. The book was gone. The counter was on. The carpet was gone. I could look clear through the room to the back room where the Buddha had been and then put it to the front. All I could see was the window because even the curtains had been taken out. The raft, which with the new owners finally came through and cleaned that out down to the concrete under the carpet. And they deserved every bit of it. for having decided, because one of the reasons that they could not be saved is because they had been playing fast and loose with the value of their property. For about 20 years, I finally got to see the financial paperwork. And I mentioned the house and the drug dealing and, and the drug taking, right? And of course, people had this idea that, and then they had taken on a credit card mortgage, knowing that there was absolutely no way they could have the revenue paid at all. But you know, property value of houses always goes up until 2008 which was the same year I published my first book. So they were as good as gone when I got there. It just took a long time for the inconsistencies and the red flags and the lies to be revealed. So I had, if I hadn't gotten out, like I told you, this was the pre-dumpster dive. If I had just been carried away with my love and the enthusiasm and all the rest of it, my book would have possibly been out in the dumpster with everybody else's. But I'm the same person this year that I was that year. I ain't the one. It sometimes takes me a little while to figure out what's going on. And because I love hard, it can be hard for me. But you know, in my sense, my, after that experience and in my later 30s, I've been just getting faster. Last situation, two years. And out. The situation after that, three months and out. Some things I've lost track of, but I'm moving quicker now. I'm 41, I ain't got time, and I ain't the one. But see, here's the thing. People can get so wedded, and institutions can get so wedded to feeling that they can't do any better, that they just decide to ride it out. It's like there are whole content creators sitting up advising people now. People with big channels talking about, well, if you can't pay your rent, just stay there. You can't pay your rent because they can't foreclose you in less than a year or they can't evict you in less than three months. During COVID, you could be evicted for almost two years in some states. So they're just advising people to just forget about trying to work back to work your way to your obligations, forget about being responsible, lie to everybody around you. So you're leaving them in an unprotected position. Keep on indulging in whatever wickedness you have a taste for. You can't even protect yourself. So, so sometimes these things are not personal, although they feel personal. It only becomes personal if it's made personal. But other than that, people are not able to protect themselves. So how the heck are they going to protect you? My book would have been potentially out there on a dumpster with everybody else. And even if it wasn't out there on a dumpster, they still would have had and wouldn't have been able to do anything with it. I told you that the person could not figure out how to do the overnight sale. Now, I am still protecting the identity of all these people. I have not said what year or what bookstore. A lot of them have gone out of business. I had people who are expats writing me from across the world like, what in the heck happened? And we heard this and we heard that. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll have to sit down and tell y'all what actually happened. So that leaves you with a condition of having to constantly re-traumatize yourself to explain so that people know the truth. But with all that, I will forever have a debt of gratitude. And because of that, and because I'm not so much angry and sad and vexed at the reasons that this memory has occurred, people, and see, now here's the other thing that happens. I told you the wrath. See, the Bible says that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will pay. The Bible also says God is angry with the wicked every day and with all the workers of iniquity. That's Psalm 5.5. 5. The other one is in Hebrews chapter 10 somewhere. 
So we're not talking about, you know, the average sinners because, you know, everybody knows for God so loved the world, everybody in it, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we know God's basic attitude toward everyone is that of love. However, John 3, 16 is not the end of the chapter. John 3, 17, for God did not, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right now, God's attitude in the Lord Jesus Christ is that the world might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You are already damned because you have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3 36. He that believeth on the Son hath life, and he that believeth not it shall not see life. For the wrath of God abideth on him. That is the situation for every human being in the world right now. It's also the situation for different institutions. I don't care who you are, I don't care what you're trying to build. You want to work with, you want to be wicked, you want to hang around with the people, you want to do wicked things. You may run on, our ancestors said it really well, you may run on for a long time, run on for a long time, you may run on for a long time. Let me tell you, God Almighty is going to cut you down. Nobody escapes. Nobody escapes. They ran on for a long time. If I were to give you the history, you would understand they ran on for a long time. And then that last second, the last generation came through and had it all cast out in just a few years. Nobody escapes. Nobody escapes. No institution escapes. I got a call from a mentor of mine, my oldest mentor, living mentor. How is she 87 and just still out here doing stuff and actually warn people about what was happening with certain situations in San Francisco 15? She said, I forgot that. Uncle. I said, the Lord said you to tell people that you forgot you told them how to avoid all this food system. They weren't listening. Now look what's happening. I listened to the situation that she's trying to solve. 86 years old. 86 years old. About to be 87. Got more sense in her head than probably 100 people at my age put together. Maybe 1,000. And I'm like, wait, so this happened with this institution. And so we knew in 2019 that this was a problem. So everybody knew. So they weren't working on the problem. So they already knew that this was going on then. And so it's only been two years, but this has happened. And then this has happened. And then this has happened. And ain't nobody done. I wanted to tell her, stop mewling. <laughs> but you just can't talk to your elders like that. <laughs> you can't quite find a way to say that to your elders. See, because, you know, when you do that, you <laughs> disappeared there for a minute. Though. You can't talk to your Black elders like that. <laughs> I wanted to say that to her so bad. Please stop mewling. But like myself, you get invested in people that you love. And so you want to pick up and carry that ball. I was literally selling books out of that store. They weren't selling any other way. I was introducing myself to people and just selling my book, selling my book, selling my book. Because it wasn't going to happen any other way. She wasn't. The thing about it is, if I had to come through and do that order, can you imagine how many other people couldn't get their orders over the course of time? The sad story time. I was... I'm one of those people who knows that behind my anger with certain situations is just a tremendous amount of grief. Because if I love you, I want to do everything I can for you. And if you make it so that I can't. But as I've matured, I've come to understand people and institutions have to have you know, on Star Wars talk about you, you can't escape your destiny, except that Darth Vader did. Yeah, you can. You do have a certain amount of free will. It's, I mean, it is laid out. We know it's a Christian. It is laid out, but inside it's laid out. You have all the room you need to make your own decisions. The election of God is so infinite, it leaves room for finite man to choose his fate inside that construct. Don't ask me to explain it. The best I can do is say if I took a ball and put it in a circle, there's an infinite number of places that that ball could be and you could divide that number of places down infinitely and never reach the bottom but they're still defined by the circle 
That's the best I can do to explain that. But inside that, every, everything has been pre-planned and let people also have a right to their free will. So do institutions. But you got a pre-dumpster dive. Because remember, first video, you will be vetted on site as a Black person. And as a Black woman, you cannot escape what's happening to Black men like that. It's just not going to happen. You can divest, you can swirl. But swirling is a little bit harder when the men you think you want to get with are best, are, if you can't answer the right question, when you get vetted on site. So what you have to do now is look at your associations. And if those associations with people and institutions are not going to fit you to move forward, as much as you love people and institutions, when you have enough red flags in a row, you have to value and love yourself. And as a Christian, I should say, loving God with all your heart and soul means that with something an institution's behavior, I told you the Buddha got moved from the back to the front and next to it is the thing called the black woman is God. As a Christian, this ain't gonna work. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. When the institution chooses to move another God up in the public, in his face, I got to go. So I had to pre-dumpster dive and keep my book out of the dumpster before the wrath of the new owners stripped the studs down, stripped the thing down to the studs. You made a thriving community institution into a shotgun chair overnight. But see, I couldn't love that institution enough to save it. I could only save my work and myself. That's it. Jesus was probably my color, being that he was an ancient Jew. But other than that, I guarantee you, the only resemblance I bear to him is what he graciously through the spirit of God has put in me and is conforming me to his image. Other than that, forget it. I can't save anything. So in a world in which we are vetted on sight and already given a strike because we're black and associated with everything bad that every other black person does within a mile, I was the only black person within a mile today. You just have to accept it for what it is and move carefully. And one of the ways you move carefully is just you have to, when you see, when you see bookstores that don't sell books, when you meet the people's drug dealers, when folks tell you they're trying to do their creative work, but they just need to smoke enough weed, you got to go. You got to go. And I got to find a way to find my elder mentor a way to just prepare her for the reality that she got to go. <laughs> That'll be a story time by itself if I survive, y'all, because y'all already know our Black elders don't play that. But I got to find a way. I got to find a way. And if she wants to go on this adventure, I also, even though she's my mentor, even though I love her, to step back and let her learn. And that's really hard to say. She's like another grandmother to me. But I pre-dumpster dive. I'm not gonna go in there and look for my stuff when I can see that the exit signs are already lit up for me. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. All right, y'all have a good day now. Take this to heart, it'll save your life. Because remember, things in the community are not in the situation that a lot of people think they are. Do not ever forget what's really going on right now. Like I said before, people are trying to figure out what side we're gonna get to. This is not for play play. This is not for play play.
Y'all have a good day now. Bye. Thank you for listening.